Welcome again, everyone. This is Dan Hoos, the Communications Director for Sullivan County. I am once again uh, catching our Public Health Director, Nancy McGraw, in whatever spare five minutes <laughs> she might have to talk about the uh, uh, latest with COVID-19 and coronavirus in Sullivan County. We have some interesting topics to talk about today. Nancy, thanks for joining us. Um, I know a lot of people watch this and really appreciate what you bring to it. Your insights are very valuable. So thank you for giving just a little bit of time for this. Um, so first off, let's talk about the, the situation that is of, of I think, uh, more, most immediate interest, that there was a, um, a software glitch uh, in Middletown Medical Software that prevented around 200 positive test results stretching back to November 25th from being reported to the county and I think the state as well. Um, and that's now being resolved by your uh, office. So if there's anything you, I mean, that's just the Cliff Notes version of it. Um, if there's anything you'd like to talk about with what happened, when it happened, and, and uh, how we figured out what the issue was. Sure, I'm happy to give this update today and, and I appreciate your, uh, your support as always. Um, earlier this week, we issued a press release and really it was a collaborative effort with Middletown Medical. Um, they were very forthcoming once they realized what happened and we realized what happened. We worked together to get the issue resolved as quickly as possible and then to fix it going forward. So um, we discovered um, after receiving a few phone calls that uh, people were concerned because we hadn't reached out to them, but their provider had reached out to them um, previous to that to let them know that they received a positive COVID test and that they should wait to hear from public health in the county in which they reside. So um, after we received a couple of phone calls, uh, the staff had put together, there was a, you know, a common denominator, which was it was the same provider group. So we reached out to Middletown Medical uh, Administrative staff and, and their laboratory. And they realized that unbeknownst to them, um, the software fix or whatever was happening in terms of um, an update that they made um, prevented the labs from being automatically uploaded and reported to eclairs which is the electronic clinical laboratory reporting system to the New York State Health Department that's where all local health departments get their lab results as well. It filters through that system and then to the county of residents. Um, so that's where we know to look for labs. Um, so in order to sort through all of that, they provided a list to us of all of our county residents. Uh, we were able to determine there were close to 200 uh, positive results uh, from that list going back to early, uh, late November. November 23rd or 25th, I believe. And so obviously some of those people um, would have already completed their isolation period. They would not have been reached out to uh, to do contact tracing because we didn't know about them. Um, hopefully their healthcare provider, uh, and I'm, I'm relatively very certain that you know our healthcare providers in this county and, and pretty much everywhere are very diligent about letting people know if they receive a positive result, their household family members are definitely contacts, anybody that they came into contact with within, you know, at work or in the community, if they know who they were in close contact with, um, they, they should try to let them know um, themselves while they're waiting for the health department to do a more complete contact tracing um, interview process. So. Um, we're hoping that a lot of that did happen. Um, I, in fact, know that that happened because a, a few folks had let our staff know that they took it upon themselves to notify their, obviously, their family members uh, and their coworkers, and they stayed home if they received a positive result. In fact, you're supposed to, you have to stay home um, and wait for your test results if you go to get a test, because most people are symptomatic, and that's why they go to get a test. Um, and they should remain on isolation until they get that result. And if it's positive, stay on isolation for 10 days. Um, we get the lab results, 
um, we follow up and do an interview and enter those individuals as close contacts. So it's really important because anybody who's exposed to a positive case should be quarantining for 14 days. And that's because an infection can take as, as long as two days, as little as two days or as long as 14 days to develop and for someone to show symptoms. Now, of course, some people don't show symptoms, but that's, that's a little bit not the norm. Most people will get a mild infection. And then, of course, what we're really concerned about are those individuals who have high comorbidities and medical conditions or they're elderly. Uh, if they're exposed, they have much higher risk um, to the, get very sick and possibly have to be hospitalized. So now with back to, to Middletown Medical, uh, once they found out uh, through us what was happening, they returned to uh, a manual system of, of entering information and you've been getting information from them since that point, right? Yes, since that happened, they're ma manually uploading the lab results on a daily basis, making sure they get into the system. And we're double checking that with a file that they send us. Um, electronically encrypted every day so we also have other healthcare providers that you know we routinely check and make sure um, that there's no problems or issues if we find a inconsistency we reach out to them right away mm -hmm. so uh, you don't believe this is happening with other test providers that's a question I, i've heard from some folks is okay if it happened with middletown medical how do we know it isn't happening with somebody else who's uh, doing this uh, uploading of information? Well, unfortunately, we don't know until it becomes an issue and we become aware of a problem, but we have to trust that the system is working the way that it should. If we find out that there are some inconsistencies, we reach out to them. Have we found out uh, of any other providers where there's cause for concern at this point? Um, not recently, no. And what did we have to do? I, I assume our, our team had to work uh, quite quickly and uh, intensely to uh, uh, follow up with these 200 or so cases that suddenly came upon our radar, right? It is, is that about done yeah. or is that still ongoing? Uh, they're getting close to completion, believe it or not. Uh, they've done a tremendous amount of work in two days and uh, we've brought on some per diem staff. Uh, we've brought them back to help us with the surge because we wanted to make sure that we were able to get uh, individuals uh, in contact with individuals and their, identify their close contacts as quickly as possible. Now, many of those people, their quarantine period has already passed, so it's a moot point. Um, and we may not be reaching out to them. So. If uh, somebody tested positive on the 25th of November, that, you know, two weeks after that 10 day isolation period has pretty much come and gone. Um, but there's still a, a significant number of people that we're continuing to reach out to. And how about our public dashboard? Is that number now reflecting uh, this, the, these updated figures or are we still looking to? That'll be, that should be updated later today. Um, I have a, looked but I believe that it's yeah they're still working on it <clears throat> so that the number of active cases may not reflect you know the additional almost 200 people because um, if that time has come and gone uh, they will no longer be an active case instead they'll be add to the confirmed uh, total positive cases okay so the numbers will be reflected in some form on the dashboard just uh, where yeah. applicable. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else you wanted to say about that situation before we uh, turn to the vaccine update? Um, just that it's, you know, we've, we sent out another health advisory yesterday uh, regarding uh, a party at a restaurant. The holidays are coming. Um, I, we can't stress enough. I know that people are really, you know, they have fatigue and they're tired of um, the social distancing and the wearing masks, but this is not the time to let our guard down when we know that the number of cases are continuing to rise. If you've seen our hospitalizations are up, 
to 11 uh, yesterday, and they'll continue to go up if we have more exposures and positive cases. There are clusters and outbreaks in different parts of the county, and we want to make sure that if um, people are considering uh, gathering, please keep it very small to your household members and close contacts if you must. And that doesn't mean a party of 20, 30, 40, 50 people, more like two or three. Um, wear a mask and socially distance because uh, community-wide transmission is, we're back to where we were in May and June at this point with the highest number of cases in this county um, and the highest number of hospitalizations um, since the end of June. So we need to be diligent and all the medical experts are saying and the public health experts are saying, expect a continuing ongoing surge through December and January after the holidays because we know that a lot of people won't listen. They'll do what they want to do. They'll put others at risk. This is serious for some people. While it doesn't seem to be impacting other people as much, and those people who are, have not been personally affected may be letting their guard down. It's, it's people who you don't know could be very high risk we don't know how it's going to affect the person next to you. So do the right thing and wear a mask and socially distance and do both, not just, you know, um, be in a group setting without a mask, even if you think some person across the room is 12 feet away. If you're all in a room together for longer than 15 minutes and somebody's positive, you're considered exposed and you may develop an infection. So. We just want everybody to be protected and get through the holidays, get through now for the next couple of few months until we can start ensuring that large numbers of people get access to the vaccine. Um, and until a certain percentage of the population is vaccinated, um, we need to continue to be diligent and wear masks it's not going to be a, a magical cure. We still need to use those prevention measures while we're hoping for, you know, as many people as possible getting vaccinated. That's a good segue into the, the vaccination uh, update. We, of course, had submitted a plan to the state for approval. Have they approved that plan or have they now moved into a different kind of plan? I heard some, some word from the governor earlier this week. So what is the latest with the vaccine distribution? So any um, operational plan is just that. It's an operational plan. Um, it's meant to be a working document for any organization. Um, all county health departments developed a COVID vaccine distribution plan um, and submitted it to the state health department. That was uh, back in November. And in December, they were all reviewed and we provided a little bit more feedback. It's meant to be um, a living document, so it will change. However, since the governor has uh, announced um, the state's um, vaccination administration plan, things may look a little differently. We are still waiting at the county level to find out more details in terms of how, how this is going to look for each of our counties. Um, there will be regional vaccination hubs led by hospitals, hospital systems, and I believe that's because they want to make sure that depending on the allocation that they're able to quickly get as many vaccines out into the communities as possible, do it regionally based on population, and also make sure that they have the storage capacity and facilities to do this and do it quickly. For that first phase of hospital workers, healthcare workers, essential workers, and then in the following phases, the local health departments will be um, working in tandem in partnership with the state and the hospitals in our regions to then plan for how we're going to distribute vaccine to our communities, and especially to those who 
have a difficulty accessing um, health care, especially in our rural communities. So I anticipate that public health directors and commissioners will have a seat at the table with hospital systems and rolling out those plans, and those plans will be due in early January. So we're already now planning to update the plan we already provided to the state. Yes, um, the phrase your best laid plan is always subject to uh, revision is, is the case here. This is a rapidly evolving situation. Just because we put out a plan doesn't mean it's not gonna be something different six months from now. Right. And that is certainly the case. We've never had a pandemic uh, in a hundred years at least. And um, you know, this is a quickly evolving, changing situation. It sounds like at least the first rollout of vaccines, and I think we've already seen this because they're rolling out in our community, will be through the local hospitals. Yes, yes, that is true. And they're currently vaccinating uh, their staff and doing a great job of it. I've seen some of their pictures um, on their website. And it's safe and effective, and we really want to make sure that we protect as many people as possible who are high risk. Uh, that certainly includes our healthcare workers and our nursing homes, our residents and staff, and essential workers. Any idea when uh, those, those folks that you just mentioned, our healthcare workers or our care center folks, uh, other nursing home folks might get the vaccine, or is that still uncertain? It should be very soon, um, probably as soon as next week uh, for nursing homes. It really just depends on the timing of of the shipment. We're all waiting to hear, you know, when that is going to be coming through. But the nursing homes will be working with their contracted uh, pharmacists, uh, pharmacy vendors, to come in and do their staff and their their residents. Okay. Well, I've kept you, I think, as long as I promised. Uh, I don't want to keep you any longer. I know you have a lot going on. Is there anything else you want to say before we conclude for this week? I just wish everybody happy holidays and please stay safe and really consider for yourself and your family that you want to uh, stay healthy, have small gatherings as uh, discouraging as it may be, especially this time of year, not to be getting together um, and part having parties. It's really for everybody's protection because our, our um, infectious rates are really going up quite substantially. All right. Thank you, Nancy, for your time. And on behalf of everyone who's watching this, happy holidays to you and your family as well. I hope you get some time to spend with them. <laughs> Thank you.